Welcome back. Daniel Cox is with the American Enterprise Institute and the director of the Survey Center on American Life. He joins us from Washington. So, Mr. Cox, you have taken the measure of the American people with some of your surveys. Based on what you've learned, what came to mind last Wednesday? Well, it was really a culmination, I think, of a, a lot of the, the rhetoric that we've seen. And we focus a lot on Trump, but not just Trump, uh, but in the, some of the conservative media, some members of Congress who are trafficking in, in falsehoods, quite frankly. And a lot of uh, members of their party believe it and believe it completely and, and just going on to do the next step. Uh, in a survey we conducted last fall, we found a significant number of Republicans believe in this idea of the deep state that there's a there's a secret cabal of government workers who are who are working against the president and um, these other kind of conspiracies that um, might seem outlandish to many of us, but for a lot of these folks, it's part of their worldview. Why do you think that is? Well, I think they're they're hearing it again and again and again from people they trust. Uh, there's been a, a precipitous decline in trust in media, whether it's uh, or institutions, including the media and, and government. And so now folks say, I, I do my own homework. I do, I, I research myself if I want to know the truth. And that leads them, you know, really back to kind of, uh, whether it's media sites or social network, um, but places that validate their views as opposed to challenging them. And uh, we focus a lot on the media, I think, and, and rightly so, but I think also we need to look at people's personal networks. So we found that people who have only members of their own party or people who share their ideological uh, vantage uh, are much more extreme, much more likely to, to believe in conspiracy theories than folks with a, a more politically mixed uh, network of folks. Uh, well, let's get to that. Your survey says that nearly one in five Americans reported having no one they were close to, a 9% increase from 2013, and that socially disconnected folks were far more likely to view President Trump positively and supported his reelection. Yeah, I think certainly there's, there's a group of, of folks who might be kind of irregular participants in the political process that Trump has drawn in, uh, and they support him more than the Re Republican Party. Uh, and that's, I think, why you're seeing some of the, the results in places like Georgia, where some of these voters did not turn out because uh, when Trump wasn't on the ballot. Uh, but in terms of the rise in people who are kind of socially isolated or alienated, uh, a number of folks have looked at this. Uh, we found it in our survey an increase over over seven years, and, and some of it is due to, to COVID-19. We are seeing that, but not it's not completely explained by that. So there's something else going on where people are you know becoming disconnected from from civil society, and it has really uh, pernicious effects. Uh, so what role does social media play in this? Do you think a big one, particularly when we think about how a lot of the, these falsehoods. Uh, false accusations, they, they move so rapidly over social media that a lot of them are embedded. And I think, you know, I do give social media companies some credit for trying, you know, particularly Twitter, for trying to get a handle on this stuff and labeling it. But, but for a lot of it, it's really hard. Uh, you know, and I think it requires them to be, you know, and, and p consumers to be experts in all these different areas. Um, and it's much easier to say, well, I, I trust what Trump's telling me, uh, so I think I'm just going to go out and act on it. So the New York Times did a story on QAnon, uh, the bizarre conspiracy cult. They say that members of Congress are Satanists and pedophiles, uh, that, and that Mr. Trump is their savior. They pointed out that there's a social disconnection with many of the, the cult members that the cult itself offers, which is their motto, where we go one, we go all. And that's part of the attraction. Yeah, and in fact, I think it's two things. It's community, which is very important, uh, and a lot of people to connect with, with people of like mind, and it's purpose. It gives people purpose. I, I have something to do. And we saw a, a lot of that uh, if you looked at some of the online message board and chat boards about what people were saying, uh, some Trump supporters were saying in real time uh, while he's speaking, and then afterwards, uh, they really wanted Trump to give them a, a lay out a course of action for them. And I think. Uh, a lot of them were reading not too much between the lines uh, and in, in storming the, the Capitol, that this is something that they had to do. They were defending um, democracy when, in, in fact, they were uh, um, they were a, a mob that was trying to overturn uh, a democratically held election. Daniel Cox from the Survey Center on American Life and the American Enterprise Institute. Thanks for taking the time.